Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kiana Faircloth. That's right, folks, we're back with another episode of Studio 901, where we are excited to continue with the custom of spotlighting local emerging and established artists that are creating right here in the DMV. With us, you'll discover some of the area's greatest treasures, some of our best kept secrets, and hear some never before told stories about living the creative life. And if you don't know, this show is DCTV's greatest exploration of the art that is among us. Joining me today on Studio 901 is DuPont Brass. DuPont Brass is a new and innovative brass band hailing from the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Originally composed of five music majors from Howard University, trying to raise money for tuition during the Christmas season. Since 2012, the group's roster has doubled in size, incorporating arrangers, graphic artists, and a videographer. Gaining ample popularity from playing at local metro rail stations, DuPont Brass has had the honor of performing for a multitude of distinguished occasions, including but not limited to weddings, fundraisers, banquets, and political events. Aside from their event services, DuPont Brass has also performed throughout the city as a featured group with the acclaimed DC Jazz Festival, The Washington Post, and WPFW. The young group's eclectic nature is a testament to their success, as DuPont Brass is trained in both classical and contemporary genres. Overall, the mission of DuPont Brass is to uplift the spirits of people with their music, not just in the DMV area, but across the world. Welcome to Studio 901, DuPont Brass. Thank you. Thank you. What's up? What's up? <laughs> it's so good to have you all here. Can I have you all, first off, introduce yourselves, starting with you? Okay, my name is Anthony Daniel. And what do you play? I play a trumpet, and I'm the music director for the group. Awesome. My name is Jared Bailey, and I play flugelhorn, and I also rap for the group. All right. What's going on? My name is Izzy, and uh, I'm a vocalist, um, rapper, and a trombone player for the group. All right. My name is Brent. I'm the tuba player and the manager from the group. All right. My name is John. I'm a trumpet player for the group, and I'm also the group's engineer. Okay, so it's a one-stop shop here. You guys yeah. don't have to go outside yes, and do congress. Never. Do is that yourself. sort of the idea of, you know, what you guys do, your mission and all that, to just get it done by yourself? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. 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 I mean, ain't nobody going to give it to you. Right. Exactly. Now, is that out of necessity because you had to learn how to do all of these different elements of music production and, and performing and all of that, or do think, you just prefer it that way? I think it just makes it better because, like, we know what we want. You know what I mean. So, like, if you're if we're writing our own music, we all we know the, all the capabilities of each player. So it's easier if it was like I know exactly how low Brent can play, mm -hmm. or like how high John can play on his trumpet or something like that. So when I'm writing music, I can just do that and I know that right away. And John knows how we want us to sound. So when he's mixing us or like mastering our tunes, like he doesn't really need to ask us as much because he already knows what we want. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. So you sort of intuitively know each other, and that I'm sure makes for a more yeah. cohesive sound as a group, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, a lot. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It also happened naturally, I would say, you know, for example, uh, our uh, videographer and uh, our graphic designer, you know, we were just friends with them, and they just happened to do that. So when we needed it, why not bring on a friend, you mm -hmm. know, keep it in-house and family? That's right. Speaking of that, you guys are brothers, right? In yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Find you alpha, right? Yeah, yes. we are my brother. Me, yeah. 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 Shout out to the Zeta Oda chapter. And Shout out to the Pi Beta chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Hampton yeah. So that's well. Howard and Hampton. Oh, Howard yeah. and Hampton. Yeah. Yeah. So did you go to Hampton? I was the only weird guy that went to Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I knew Anthony from high school. We uh we played trumpet together like all throughout high school and then um I used to see him every day during the summertime during breaks and stuff, so okay. we're just always around. So no mm -hmm. real HU vi rivalry happening? Uh, <laughs> only, only, yeah, it, it is definitely, no, it's definitely, true. definitely HU rivalries. It's, it's the worst on game days, I'll put it like that. Okay. But other than that, it's, it's kind of just, just, just normal, just, just normal smack talk. <laughs> of yeah, of course. <laughs> but you come together over the music and that's all of that course, matters, yeah, right? Of course, of course, all right. Can course. we start with you and tell me when you started in music? What age were you and what brought you to music? This is going to sound probably funny or corny or whatever, but uh, I 
started music probably after I saw the movie Drumline. Honestly, okay. I was like, I wanna, I wanna do that. I always knew I was gonna go to college, but I didn't know I was gonna pay for it. So I was like, well, I can use music as a way to go to school. I'm gonna do that. So um, I got in middle school. I was in eighth grade. I was 13, but we had too many drummers. So my music teacher was like, well, just play this, and it was a trumpet, and that's how okay. it started. Uh, I kind of grew up in like a musical household, music lover's household. You know, my brother played the sax, so you know, I naturally wanted to like pick up something that complemented that, and it ended up being the trumpet. You know, I was raised in the choirs and I uh, started rapping when I was like 10 and 11. Mm. And uh, as I got older, you know, like high school, I started to realize that music is just what I wanted to do. So I just ran with it. Awesome. Is he? Um, I have to say, I uh, started out in church singing a lot. And um, also, Drumline pretty much inspired me to play in the band as well. It's, it's not even corny, man, because that, I mean, that's what the movie was supposed to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, when I got to high school, somebody asked me to go to the studio one day to rap. And uh, I did, and uh, I got kind of hooked on it, and I realized that I could go to school for music. And that's just, you know, the rest, rest is history. Yeah, <laughs> that, that whole All right, Brett. Uh, I actually started in fourth grade, and I started off playing the clarinet. Uh, it was either play, <laughs> play the clarinet or don't play music at all. So I figured I'd give it a, a, a shot. I hated clarinet. Uh, I ended up switching to bass clarinet. When I got to high school, I want to say it was about my, the end of my freshman year, what happened was my band director needed two players. Like, band directors usually always need two players because not a lot of them. I ended up switching, I, I gave it a shot. And uh, I just like fell in love with the instrument. Mm -hmm. And just from there, it was just history. I just wanted to pursue it. Yeah. All right, last but not least. Uh, yeah, with <laughs> me, um, it was kind of, just kind of just everybody else was doing it in the middle school. So I wanted to fit in for real, but I wanted to fit in. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to lie. I wanted to fit in. I thought people that play instruments were cool. But I wanted to play the saxophone. So my mom went to the music store and bought a trumpet. Well, like ran the trumpet. I was like, here's your saxophone. And I'm just like, no, this isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Did she really think it was a sax or was she being funny? I, I, honestly, I cannot tell you. Okay. I cannot tell you. I, I honestly believe she thought it was because, I mean, like, music really wasn't in my family like that. So yeah. it was kind of just, I'm just going to try it. And then I loved it. And then I got to high school and college and I started playing drums and stuff. And then I got into producing and engineering. And I was just mm -hmm. like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Awesome. Well, when we return, we'll talk more with DuPont Brass and how they got started and how they shaped their sound as they moved from playing to the train stations, transitioning into playing music full-time as a business. Stay close. We'll be right back. This is Studio 901. We have a big problem and we need your help. It's happening on college campuses, at bars, at parties, even in high schools. It's happening to our sisters and our daughters. Our wives and our friends. It's called sexual assault and it has to stop. We have to stop it. So listen up. If she doesn't consent or if she can't consent, it's rape, it's assault. It's a crime, it's wrong. If I saw it happening and I was taught, you have to do something about it. If I saw it happening, I'd speak up. If I saw it happening, I'd never blame her. I'd help her. Because I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. We need all of you to be part of the solution. This is about respect. It's about responsibility. It's up to all of us to put an end to sexual assault. And that starts with you. Because one is too many. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. 
F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T. Fast. Welcome back to Studio 901. I'm chatting with DuPont Brass. So we all want to know, first, how did you all get together? And I know you got together to pay for your tuition for school. Mm -hmm. Did that tuition get paid? <laughs> uh, so, start with the first question. Uh, <laughs> start with the first question. So uh, we all just write like we got together because we had a financial need for you know for schooling. Yeah. We School. were broke, bro. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, we were, we were. And uh, so like Jared, Izzy, and Brent, and then uh, another trombone player used to go to like Georgetown and busk uh, before like I was really playing with them like that. And um, it wasn't really that lucrative. And it was super cold too, so it really yeah. wasn't really worth it. And uh, one of my classes, one of my education classes, this girl named Jill, so shout out to Jill, uh, told us, she was like, have you ever thought about playing in DuPont? Because a lot of brass bands play out there. Huh. So I was like, no, but I mean, I'll tell them. So uh, over Thanksgiving break, that break I wrote where I arranged that uh, Christmas time is here by like Charlie Brown Christmas yeah, for the it. group. It's, <laughs> it's one of mine too. Uh, Everybody. We didn't, we didn't have a, a French horn. So instead of using a French horn, that's when uh, Jared started playing flugelhorn okay. a lot for the group. And uh, we just got in the band room, we rehearsed it. First that night we went to Georgetown and then we didn't make any money again. So I was like, y'all, listen to me, let's go to DuPont. Yeah. <laughs> so we finally went and then it was, it was great. I mean, we didn't really, we didn't, I mean, compared to now, we didn't really make much, but I mean, it was it was way better than uh than Georgetown. Yeah. Yeah, Honestly. and the reactions of the people, man. They just yeah. seem to really be into it. Like at other places or other metro stops, you'll we see people annoying. just walk past you, like, <laughs> right. yeah, like you're annoying. But like yeah. people were stopping, like people were like really listening, hugging their wives and Aww. you know, children running and dancing yeah. and all that. You know? <laughs> Paint the picture, Jared. Yes, it was poetic it says. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh yeah, we were in between uh Krispy Kreme and Panera, so you can like Did smell you? the Oh, bakery nice. and stuff too. And that was enticing for the yeah. folks. Yeah, to the yeah. Music. It, was, it was a good, it was a good vibe. A yeah. People <laughs> would like circle up and just like listen to us and stuff. So it was, awesome. really, it was really cool. So you did eventually oh, end up paying your yeah. <laughs> tuition. Yeah. On some real, like Dupont Brass afforded me the opportunity to like focus on school. Not have to, not have to. I mean, we was working. I mean, mm -hmm. six in the morning. Mm -hmm. Super late at night, we were working a lot, but at the same time, I didn't have to go get a traditional job to pay my rent, to pay for my books, to pay for food. I mean, life literally just changed a lot, and it, it was it was affirmation that music really can make a way for you. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It's it was, it was, it was it like kind of like a really really good. Uh, like music internship. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> it was like it was like good. Exp it yeah, was like bro. experience, and then like once we we got towards the end of like our our college careers, we were like a real life, you know, internship. Yeah, yeah. let's just do it. Yeah, and I'm sure you like you're the manager now. I'm sure you garnered that experience from you know <laughs> playing at the metro stations. Did you start off um, managing the band always, or um, how did that come about for you? When we first started off, it was kind of like a whoever was kind of right at the moment type of, yeah. type of feel. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we rolled with. But we eventually got to the point where we needed a little bit more organization. And we did, when we decided that uh, we were going to start going out in the mornings and going out in the evenings, we, we decided we needed to develop an assistant. Hold on, wait. Twice a day, you Twice guys were playing? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. class, after class. Sometimes three what? times. Yeah. 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 For real. If yeah. we had a lunch yeah. break that was long enough, we'd go <laughs> yeah. try. Yeah, yeah. 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 actually, we, uh, we, we got locked out of, uh, out of our jazz band <laughs> one time. Cause, yeah, because uh, we was rehearsal. playing. We had, a, we had a gig at some luncheon or something like that, and we really wanted to play, so we went to go play, came back. I mean, it's like, it's like the people in this group were like the main people in jazz band. Uh, at the time, yeah. yeah at the mm -hmm. time, yeah. Wow, okay. So, uh, Mr. Irby locked us out of the room. Oh, I know he did. I can see yeah, it. And we're like, yeah. Yeah, so, like, yeah. I got he, in the door, though. Yeah, I got he, he, like, he locked us out, yeah, and everything. But, I mean, but we still, you know, like, we, that's, what, that's what we wanted to do. And we were in school to do what we were doing. Mm. So, we felt like we were doing the right thing. And he mm -hmm. definitely understands now. Like, he wanted, he, he, 
I don't want, I don't want to call Mr. Ugly a fan. I don't, I don't want to disrespect him, but he does support the group. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Speaking of now and life now, how's life been after DuPont Brass? You guys are all graduated and done, right? Yeah. He, some still in graduate. Awesome. Continuing that education. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is life like for DuPont Brass now that you're not in undergrad? It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard. better, but, but it's, it's like a but blessing. It's, it's different. Uh, yeah, way it's different. It's like bittersweet, I would say, because uh, when you're in school, you have just this crazy opportunity to just practice all the time. You don't have to worry about anything but just going to class and just practicing. That's right. Honestly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, now, I mean, you know, we have to have real life responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But it's better because now you don't have to worry about classes that you may not want to pay as much attention to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, can right? put, you can just put all your energy into creating you know, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. and so you do have the the time and the space and the resources to do just that to create music oh yeah we all live yeah. together so i mean oh. yeah we I all live together it's every it's yeah, you all live together down. so like it's literally, <laughs> it's literally always he basically there he always in the studio yeah he room. always there so it's basically yeah. remote anthony be in the basement you hear you know something coming out that computer in finale like two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. i stay in the <laughs> attic i'm always in the studio doing something we always okay. in his studio yeah <laughs> they always in the studio with me brent always p playing his b flats at 11 30 at night <laughs> 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 yeah. he actually, well, he actually yawns in b flat yeah, yeah. yeah. He he yawn in b -flat. he's, he's always in tune oh. is that what yeah. that is <laughs> i don't know that's <laughs> awesome so you guys tuning. actually live you must really do like each other well i mean to live together yeah, wow. no, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were in band we together. Be. We we were in classes together. Then we ended up pledging together. Like yeah. so it it's just like became a life. natural. It's like know? a love. Like it's family. family. Yeah, like, yeah, really. Like yeah. they trust me. Everyone gets on everyone's nerves. But it's like, <laughs> but it's like we we have made this conscious decision to be together with each other. And so you all are. Do you have other side gigs, or are you just doing oh, I'm this? I'm a full time, full -time. teacher. I'm sorry. I teach music full time. Oh, okay. Pride of the Street. Shout out to William E. Doyle Jr. Public Charter School. <laughs> oh, yeah, shout it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm the music instructor over there. But um, every day after work, if I'm free, I'm at, I'm at their house or I'm, at, I'm gigging. I take off work to do gigs and uh, everybody mm -hmm. else, you know, mm -hmm. they do their thing too. Like, he's, he's, he's works at the studio full time, so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's so kind of like, yeah, now that, uh, now that I guess that most of us are like done with school, DuPont is still like our thing. But like, you know, we're not outside three times a day or two you times a day. You don't have to be, no. which yeah. is a blessing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, we still do it. We still get gigs and stuff, but we have to just find, you know, other means of income so we can still live, too. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, when we return, we'll talk more to DuPont Brass. This is Studio 901, only on DCTV. I'm Drew Brees, and being a dad means the world to me. And one of the most important things any parent can do is make sure their kids get active at least 60 minutes each day. Studies show that physical activity not only helps kids stay healthy, it can enhance important skills like concentration and problem solving, which can improve academic performance. This means physical activity can help your kids in the most important game of all, life. Thank you, dear. Well, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? Welcome back to Studio 901. I'm chatting with DuPont Brass. Now, guys, can you describe your sound for me as you embark upon a new arena of sound, of music for you all? Well, uh, we just added um, basically a full rhythm section now. When we first started, we just had five horns, no drums. Wow. So it was just a lot of like classical stuff. And, um, but we also listen to a lot of R&B and jazz as well, so we always try to infuse that with our sound. And uh, slowly but surely, we just added more people. We added drums, 
so we got you know more rhythm and accompaniment behind that. Then uh, this summer we added piano and guitar. Awesome. So now like our sound is. Don't just, forget about me. Oh yeah, we <laughs> added piano and guitar, and uh, actually yeah, it was really cool. Like Izzy was at rehearsal with us one day. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I gotta tell the story. Izzy was at rehearsal with us, and uh, we recorded one song of, of us playing, and they got like I don't know how many likes, maybe like ten or something like that. And then we were playing Pretty Brown Eyes, like an arrangement of Pretty Brown Eyes. It's my favorite band. Pink Condition is my favorite. <laughs> they are, they are <laughs> tight. They are tight. <laughs> but we were playing, and then he's like singing over us, and then people just loved it. So many people commenting and stuff. So we were like, well, what if Izzy was just a full time singer with us? You know what uh -huh. I mean? Yeah, it's so the whole thing him. up, man. Okay. So we went. So you we, got your Stokely on? Well, you know. <laughs> got your Douglas awesome. on. We really so, have okay. grown a lot, yeah. So you progressed sound. from <laughs> classical to jazz to R&B. Gosh, Sorry, what's next? What's on the future? What's on the horizon for you all as DuPont Brass? You have how many members? I think like 11 now. 11 members. We're trying to compete with Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. yeah we, we've grown pretty big. Uh, our next couple of plans consist of trying to put together a tour, like a university tour going down the Please East Coast. Please book us. In nice. The south and then Please. back up. Uh, <laughs> and then once we get done with that, we're looking to work on our second like studio album project. And then uh, from there, we're, we're not quite sure, but I mean, that's that's a lot of stuff to handle right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. also dropping a SoundCloud EP too, coming soon. Okay, coming very, soon. Very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Coming soon. Very soon, so we should <laughs> be on the lookout the then. <laughs> yeah. So how can we get in touch with you guys? How can we get in touch with DuPont Brass? I want to book you. How do we do it? <laughs> oh, easy. DuPontBrass Dupont at gmail.com or okay. go to our website at DuPontBrass.com. And everything is there. We're doing the website now. Okay, it's pretty cool as it is, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the, oh, the metro yeah. theme, you know. Yo, well, it's changed. We, we, just, we just redesigned um, it. Shout okay. out to Hat Creative. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. Amplify. Yeah. Those are our graphic designers who uh, started their own companies and they own right. Awesome. And I mean, the whole little metro idea, that was that was really, really tight. And Curry did that when we were yeah. in school. So. Mm -hmm. Got wow. it. We yeah. played trombone with us before, and he was a, he was a, a architecture major in school, though. So he does okay. a lot of design and stuff. Gosh, so you guys have given each other a great start and others as well on whatever, you yeah. know, professional path they find themselves on. God, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Okay, so give us the Twitter, the Instagram, all that stuff, Facebook. Oh, DuPont Brass DuPont HU. Brass. Yeah, DuPont Brass yeah. HU is the Twitter. Still HU. Okay. And then uh, DuPont Brass is just uh, the I mean, uh, Instagram. Yeah, just Google it. Or if you go to DuPontBrass.com. Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. yeah. that's how you yeah. make it easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's Brass. how you do that. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be right back. This is Studio 901, only on DCTV. <laughs> neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart is a sea race. race. Love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. 
Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together we can solve hunger. Together we're Feeding America. Thank you for tuning in to Studio 901. It's been such a pleasure sitting down and talking with DuPont Brass. Mm. <laughs> they are definitely one band that you cannot miss performing in this area. And now that the secret is out about them, then you shouldn't miss them when they are performing around the city or around the world. Remember, mm -hmm. Studio 901 spotlights emerging artists from all over the DMV that are creating and performing right in our own backyard. If you want to find out more about what you saw today, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at Your DCTV, or visit us online at dctv.org. Before you leave, I want to leave you with this quote from American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. Whether you succeed or not is irrelevant. There is no such thing. Making your unknown known is the important thing. Join us for another episode of Studio 901, where we just might spotlight you. I'm Kiana Faircloth. Until next time.